my name is Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to this video which is basically a continuation on how global warming is going to affect gas engineers. So in this video today we're going to look at gas boilers versus renewables. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss any of the videos. So, let's stop waffling and let's get on with it and let's see which is best for us, a gas boiler or the renewables. Now, the products we're going to be looking at today are a gas boiler. Now, we're going to be looking at natural gas boilers but... I would think hydrogen boilers are going to be pretty much the same pricing as we're going through this. So uh, I can't see they're going to be much difference. We're going to look at oil boilers. We're going to look at biomass boilers. We're going to look at air to water heat pumps. We're going to look at ground source heat pumps. We're going to look at air to air heat pumps direct acting electric panelled heaters and finally electric boilers. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this video. We're going to be doing a comparison to find out what they're going to cost, how long they're going to last and how good they are for us. Let's get on with it. Now first thing we're going to look at is costs. Now I want to get this clear right from the beginning because I have got a lot of stick in a few of my videos on pricing. They're not my pricing. What I've done is I've gone on the interweb, I've taken three prices, I've added them together, I've divided by three and I've come out with an average cost. So I seem to get a lot of stick from guys from London saying I'm too cheap. Well there is a massive difference between London and the north where I live. So this is an average. So if you're watching this and you're going to look at getting some gas engineering to do your job, then these prices aren't set in stone. They're an average cost to give you some idea. And if you are an engineer who's installing this stuff, don't start putting in the comments that I'm completely wrong because it's an average. So <laughs> first one we're going to look at is the gas boiler. And this is for a, these are all for a two, three bed, have a new build or retrofit from the, having nothing in there from the start. So we've got a new or full retrofit on first time heating with a 24 kilowatt combi and the price of the combi is an average price again. All rads, pipe fittings, controls with a new gas run, you're looking around about £5,400. If we've got a new or full uh, retrofit for first time heating with a 24 kilowatt system boiler, we've got rads, fittings, pipes, controls, uh, new gas run with a 200 litre unvented cylinder, you're looking at 6,228 quid. So that's the kind of pricing you're going to get. Is that high? Is that mid? Is that low? It depends on where you live in the country and it also depends on what boiler you're having installed because there are some boilers at nearly two grand and there's some boilers at 500 quid so there's a massive ban there so that's the average price for having a brand new heating system put in with a gas boiler and again like i said at the beginning of the uh, video that could be natural gas and it could be hydrogen lpg could be a little bit more expensive but uh, that's what you're looking at. Next one we're going to look at are oil boilers and again it's the same two three bed house and again it's new or full retrofit systems and again oil boilers will be phased out in new builds like gas boilers will by 2025 but the oil boiler manufacturers are making inroads into making biofuels for these so oil boilers could still exist like gas boilers will after 2025. Okay, now then, one of the diff things I did find out while I was researching this, combi oil boilers are massively expensive. More expensive than it was to buy a system boiler or a heat only boiler and a um, unvented cylinder for oil. 
So that was the first thing I found. So for new or full retrofit for first time heating with a 21 kilowatt combi, all the rods, pipe fittings, controls with the new oil tank, you're looking about 7,440 quid as the average, remember. And then we've got new or full retro first time heating for a 24 kilowatt system boiler rods fitting, pipes, controls, new oil tank with 200 litre unvented cylinder was 7,050. So you could see nearly 400 quid difference between having more equipment. Anyway, that's your oil boiler. And as you can see, oil boilers are a lot more expensive than gas boilers. Now, this is where we start getting some serious investment into renewables. So the first one we'll look at is biomass boiler. So we've got, again, new full or retrofit for first time heating with a 25 kilowatt pellet boiler with your rod, your pipe, your fittings and your buffer tank and pellet store. You're looking about 24,300 but you'd be massively shocked at some of the prices I did see on the internet for it. But again, as an average, about nearly 25 grand. So if you want air to water heat pump, okay, and again, new or uh, retrofit for first time heating with a 16 kilowatt air source heat pump, again, you round your fittings, your controls and a buffer tank, you're looking about 21,550 quid. So we're starting to get into serious money. Now the next one is serious candy you're splashing out to have it initially installed, which is your ground to water heat pump or your ground source heat pump. So new full or retro for first time heating with a 12 kilowatt ground source heat pump. All this is with radiators, pipe fittings, controls, buffer tank and your ground works. 27,350. The most I saw all this on the internet for this type of system was over 50,000 quid. Okay, and this was with radiators. You can add more money onto that if you have underfloor heating. But I would advise to have this type of system with underfloor heating because if you're using radiators with these type of systems, they're massively sized. And if we've got air to air heat pumps, so we've got the units, so we've got new or full retrofit first time heating with three times two kilowatt bedroom heaters, one times five kilowatt lounge heaters, no hot water facilities though with this, you'd then be looking at an uh, unvented cylinder powered by electric and you'd be looking at 8,800 quid. So there's some serious candy being spent here. Now the last two we're going to look at, it's all about electric, so electric storage heaters, why anybody would want electric storage heaters fitted is beyond me, but again this is for a one bedroom flat, you would look at about 2,860 quid, and then you would need to look at something for heating the water, so uh, well, that's not a cheap way of doing it. Electric boiler, this is not a combi, this is just an electric boiler, so we've got again new full retrofit uh, with a 7 kilowatt boiler, your rads, pipe and fittings, and again, no hot water system, you're looking about 3,500 quid. So that is a quick look at the average prices of what you could uh, pay for. Now remember, every system's different, they're not all the same. I just took three average prices, added them together and divided by three to give me these prices. Now I know this is not a million miles out because that's what we've just done in my son's flat. And that's basically round about what it would cost. So now we know that one's not a million miles out. Okay, But again, their average prices, you could pay a lot more or you could even pay less. It all depends on your own situation if you're a... Uh, customer looking for this stuff to be installed. Now let's have a look at the running costs of all these different types of systems. Now let's have a look at the service costs for these different appliances. Again, I've taken an average of three uh, prices off the internet, divided it by three to give me the average. And these prices don't include VAT, but they do include parts, okay? 
So the average gas boiler, you're looking around about 75 quid for a in warranty boiler that is. Oil boilers, about 150 quid. Biomass boilers, about 250. Air to water heat pumps, about 200. Ground source, uh, about 275. Air to air, about 250. Electric storage heaters and electric boilers, they say there's no cost. Now the companies for the heat pumps say servicing is very little but they need to be checked every year and because there's so few engineers out there they're commanding high prices for their servicing so that's why their servicing costs are quite high so that's a quick look at the servicing cost and again um, combi gas boilers are going to be the cheapest thing to service mind you saying that electric storage heaters and electric boilers they say is zero so I guess they won. So that's the servicing costs. Let's look at the lifespan then. So how long are they going to last? Gas boilers, 10 to 15 years. But the warranties on boilers are going up and up and up all the time. So this could actually increase because of the amount of warranties. So some boiler manufacturers giving you between the 10 to 15 year warranties. So you could expect to see that go up. Oil boilers, 15 to 17 years. Biomass boilers, 18 to 20 years. Air to water heat pumps, 20 to 25 years. Ground source heat pumps, 15 to 20 years. Air to air, again, 15 to 20 years. Electric storage heaters, 10 to 15 years. And electric boilers, 15 to 20 years. And this is as long as you look after them and the service regular um, so they're all not a million miles away from each other. They can all be around the 10 to 20 year um, lifespan. So that's lifespan. Now let's have a look at the running costs of these things. And this was a bit of an eye opener for me when I was researching this because I don't pay the gas and electric bills in my house so I'm not sure exactly what it costs. So it was a bit of a shock really. Now storage heaters they're completely electric and most people if they've got storage heaters will have them on economy 7, economy 8 or economy 9 I think they've got now. So you have them on low rate tariffs where the electricity heats the blocks in the heaters overnight so say from 12 midnight till 6 in the morning you get cheaper tariff electricity which is about 13p per kilowatt hour okay so if you have a one two kilowatt heater on low and I mean on low it's probably going to cost you about 13p per kilowatt hour okay now if we take a 24 kilowatt gas combi just doing the central heating it's about 3.8p per kilowatt hour and if you ran it all day it would probably cost you about 91p per hour okay so you can see there's a bit of a difference there. So one heater on low is 13p for electric, but the whole house, heat the whole house for one hour costs you 91p as an average. So the average UK household gas consumption is between 8,000 kilowatt hours and 17,000 kilowatt hours, which will give us an average fuel bill of about 636 pounds per year for the gas, okay? Now the average electricity bill with a gas boiler is about £487 per year. So if you added those two together, you'd see we're just over a grand. Okay. So some of you will be paying a lot more than that. I know you will. And some will be paying a lot less. It all depends on who your supplier is and whether you've switched or what you're doing. So if we look at the price per kilowatt hour because that's what you would look at when you're switching your supplier. So if we had electricity, it's about 13p, as we say, per kilowatt hour. We say the gas boiler is about 3.8p per kilowatt hour. Oil boiler is about 4.81p per kilowatt hour. And wood pellets is about 599 per kilowatt hour. So you notice I haven't got anything about renewables. And that's because 
Your renewables will need electricity. Now, I've seen electricity prices per kilowatt hour up to, on the internet up to 16, 17, 18p. This is the, probably the lowest I could find was about 13p. So, as an average, remember. So, when you're using renewables, you need electricity. So, that's where that comes into play. Now, the manufacturers for these heat pumps say they use very little um, electricity. But when I've been researching it, that's not technically true. So, let's have a look at these renewables and find out exactly how much they cost to run. Now, let's compare an electric boiler uh, with a gas boiler. Okay. Now, remember, electric is 100% efficient when you're using it. But depending upon how you make it, whether you're using gas or renewables or whatever, it could be 50% efficient to make it, but 100% to use it. Whereas gas, using a new high condensing boiler, at its worst would be about 92% efficient. At its best, probably 96% efficient. I don't think we're ever going to get them higher than that, even though some of the manufacturers do say they are higher than that. So, if we take this high rating which I found of 16.6p per kilowatt hour, which some of you out there may be paying, and if you are paying that, you need to look at switching. Uh, for this 12 kilowatt boiler, it would use for about 70 hours per month, £139.44p. So around £1,670 per year. That's just for heating, that's not for the hot water as well. But if we look for the same house for a gas boiler which is doing the heating and hot water, we've got around £70 per month, which comes out about £840.60 per year to do the heating and the hot water. So massive difference there, okay? Half the price. <laughs> so that's the first thing. And it, and again, guys, before you start jumping up and down and getting onto the comments down below saying I'm talking nonsense, this is what I have found on the internet. And this is what I've got speaking to people like my son who's got an all-electric flat. Okay, who pays massive amounts of electricity. And compared to what we pay, and I live in a little cottage um, with gas and electric. So... When we spoke about this, we're not a million miles out, okay? So, <laughs> energy cost, just horrendous. So, uh, let's look at the heat pump costs. So, let's have a look at this air to air heat pump or air to water heat pump. And if they were doing space heating. So, we'll need about 6,000 kilowatt hours of electricity. Uh, to heat uh, the average house and if we take this 13p per kilowatt hour that we found it would cost around £756 per year for just the space heating that's no hot water okay so if we have a look at the hot water with the ground source heat pumps okay so we're gaining heat from the ground so it heats the water to around 50 degrees C, which is great for underfloor heating, and that's what they're designed for, and that's what they're amazing for, is underfloor heating. But, if we want to use it for water, we have to take it above 60 degrees. So we need to use an electric immersion heater to heat it up. Well, you could actually use a gas boiler, but we'll, we'll take that out of the equation. So we need about 4,000 kilowatt hours per year for four people. So that would cost about £123 a year for getting the water at 50 degrees. Pretty cheap. So to take the water to 60 degrees though, where we need an electric immersion heater, you would need an additional £132 of electricity. So those two added together would be about 253 quid for your water and if you took this as an average for your heating as well 
using heat pumps would cost around a thousand pounds per year to run for heating and hot water. That's shocking, <laughs> isn't it? It's actually dearer than it would be to use a gas boiler. But again, if you're using your own renewable electricity, the cost is nothing, it's only the actual cost of putting it in. Okay, so as you can see already at the moment, a gas boiler is massively cheaper to run than anything else. The only downside of a gas boiler is the CO2 emissions. When you think about it, that little white box on the wall, which is some of them are as small as a cupboard, gives you heating and hot water and it gives it you like that instantly. Combi boilers are amazing things, absolutely amazing. If you think about the technology in them, they're cheap as chips. They're amazing, but the CO2 they put out into the atmosphere is their biggest Achilles heel. And if we can get rid of that CO2, these are not needed. Ground source, air source, they're massively cost thousands to install. They cost thousands to maintain, and when they go wrong, it costs thousands to put right. The lifespan is about the same time. Okay? You, you can live in a little terraced house in the middle of where my trading centre is in Ashton and have ground source heat pump. Your garden's not big enough for a hundred metre ground run. Okay? And you can't dig a borehole neither. So, ground source heat pumps in the middle of Ashton, out of the question. Air source heat pumps, most of the houses around here are terraced houses. About 31% of the houses in the Ashton area are a terraced house. So, having air source, air to air, or air to water, where are we going to put the stuff? Where are we going to put the buffer tanks? The buffer tanks are massive. Where's the units going to go outside? Okay, in the backyard? And if every terraced house, row of terraced house have all got air source heat pumps, the noise will be horrendous. Okay? What I'm trying to say is, it's crying out for this hydrogen. To heat hot water and heat your house efficiently and save the planet, we need some way of getting the CO2 emissions down from boilers, from gas boilers. And if that means switching to hydrogen, that's the way we go. Don't get me wrong guys, if you're building a brand new house, you should be putting this stuff in. But you should be having solar panels on your roof. You should be getting free electricity, which is free to the atmosphere, free to the environment, okay? We cannot be dragging it from the national grid unless the national grid all of a sudden changes to a different way of making electricity. Because remember, if you watch my other video, over 50% of the electricity made in the UK at the moment is made by fossil fuel fuels. That's not good enough. If we're gonna get our CO2 targets down, massively down, we need to be looking at one, how are we going to get rid of this CO2 from gas boilers? Hydrogen. Easy. Dead easy. How are we going to get rid of our CO2 when we're making electricity? We need to go green. We need to start using wind turbines and all the rest of the stuff, what makes free electricity, solar PV. Why isn't every new house got solar panels on the roof? Okay. Why isn't every new build got air source heat pumps in the back garden? 
I'll tell you why, because they cram them all in, they buy the land which costs a lot of money, they figure out how many houses they can get onto that land and how much money it's going to cost per house and to maximise their profit. Okay, If they've got to put air source heat pumps, if they've got to put ground source heat pumps in, if they've got to put solar panels on the roof, this is going to make the houses go massively priced. So if you looked at a £300,000 house, it'd probably go up to 400000 450000 because of they need more space to separate the houses because of the noise pollution. And we need bigger houses because we need to put things like buffer tanks in. They need to install underfloor heating in the new builds, okay, instead of radiators. So the cost effect, the, the cost is massive there. So yes, new builds, we need to be start looking at this stuff. But the terraced houses we've got in Ashton, what are we going to do with them? The only way forward is going to be hydrogen. That's what I personally think we need to look at getting our CO2 levels down and we also need to think about the costs. We've seen the average cost of putting a gas boiler in. Whether it's hydrogen or whether it's natural gas is not going to make any difference. When we're putting ground source heat pumps in, you're looking at 50, 60, 70, 80, 100,000 biomass boilers. Massive big things they are, cost an absolute fortune. Now the government are giving grants at the moment, so let's see what the government gives you to help you to install this energy efficient stuff. Now, this government scheme is called the RHI, which stands for Domestic Renewable Heat Incentive. So, who can apply for it? So, you can claim for uh, biomass boilers, solar and heat pumps, but I believe not every heat pump. The payments are made for the first seven years, and you can apply if you live in England, Scotland and Wales. I believe they stopped it in Northern Ireland, I think it was in 2016. Hmm. You've got to have your own home or be part of the social housing. So these two sections is a domestic one and a commercial one. And it was launched in April 2014. Now after joining this RHI scheme, you receive a quarterly tariff payment for every kilowatt hour of renewable heat you produce in your home. So your payment is dependent upon how much energy you produce and you save then being made by gas boilers and the national grid. Your payment amount will be estimated on your EPC or your energy performance certificate. So the more insulation you have, so cavity wall insulation, loft insulation, floor insulation, the more stuff you've got like that, double glazing, triple glazing, the yeah, more money you'll receive. These rates will also change annually, all dependent upon the tariffs what are going around at the time. And the average payment for a heat pump is between £2,335 to £2,750 a year. So basically, you have to do your upfront costs first. So your 50 grand for your um, ground source heat pump. And then you can re uh, retain about £2,750 quid a year back off the government. So... Uh, how many years will that take then? Anyway, that's the RHI scheme. And will this continue to run? Well, they already stopped it in Northern Ireland. So if we all had to go to these, would the government then be giving you incentives to do it? No, because it's an incentive scheme. When will it stop? I don't know. <laughs> So that's what you can get back from the government if you fit these uh, biomass boilers, solar panels on your roof or your heat pumps. 
So that was the funding, so let's do a bit of sum it up. Okay. Now, first thing is, is there anything better than a gas boiler? I don't think so. Now, some of you might be thinking I'm biased towards that statement because of what I do for a living. I am a gas engineer, my business is training gas engineers, and if there's no gas, I haven't got a business. But I agree, new builds, we need to have all these new technologies. We need to have, like I said, solar panels, ground source, air source, triple glazing, blah, blah, blah. We need to have all this stuff. We need to get our carbon footprint down. We need to reduce our energy consumptions. We need, and the biggest one we need, is to get our electricity green. Until our electricity is green, and we are getting all our electricity without the use of fossil fuels, then everything's going to struggle to work. Okay, so we need gas. But what we don't need is the CO2. Now, I do believe if we go over to hydrogen, the NOx is going to increase by sixfold and cause problems that way. But we need to get something done to be able to give customers what they want. When customers turn that hot tap on, they want hot water. When customers turn that room stat and time clock on, they want central eating. They don't want to wait four hours for it to get warm. They don't want to leave it on 24 seven to get some heat. So yes, I completely agree with renewables. I completely agree we need to lower our carbon footprint. But I just want to give you some figures, just something to mull over while you're thinking about what's gone on in this video. 28% of the global electricity is generated by renewables. 28%. That's shocking. 29.4% of the UK electricity is generated by renewables. Now, if you looked at my other video, they're trying to get it to the 30%, but by December last year, because we're now in 2021, uh, it was 29.4, so they were nearly there to get it 30% for renewables. Now, China is the leading country for solar power with 208 gigawatts of power produced. I think we do about 14, I think. Why hasn't every new build house got solar panels on the roof? I'll tell you why, because they're too expensive to put on there, so they don't bother. Germany is the best country for using renewable energy with 12.74%. And we come in second in the world with 11.95. Hang on, where's America? Where's Russia? Where's China? The big countries, where are they? 63% of the US power is generated by fossil fuels. 63%. Ours is just nearly 50%. But America's massive compared to us. And you need 24 solar panels in the UK on your roof to make 6 kilowatts of electricity. 24 of them. We're not very good for solar here, are we? <laughs> especially solar PV, especially in the northwest. So, to sum up which is best, which is best for people, the population of this country, is a gas boiler. Absolutely amazing. Like I say, turn your tap on, instant hot water. Turn your room stat up, instant heat. You got radiators banging out, heat up to 80 degrees. Your room's lovely and warm. Okay? Cheapest chips to install, cheapest chips to service, and cheapest chips to repair. No shadow of a doubt, a gas boiler is the best thing 
for heating a home and heating water in the UK. There's no argument. The only argument we have got is it produces CO2 and too much of it. Okay, so if we're trying to get rid of our carbon footprint, we've got to get rid of our gas boilers. Also our cars as well, our diesel vans. Okay, that's for another video. <laughs> so in my opinion, as a gas engineer, as a trainer of gas engineers, I'm going to say the best thing in the world is a gas boiler. But I think from this video and the figures you've seen, you should be agreeing with me that yes, they are absolutely phenomenal. Okay, a little tiny box can do what it does. But, and that big but is, if we continue to do what we're doing, then we're not going to have a planet to live on. So, if you've liked this video, why don't you give me a thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you're not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because I release videos mainly on Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.